So let's look at the transport of water in more detail. Water is very important to plants. They need it for photosynthesis and also to maintain the turgor pressure in cells to keep their structure. Now the water is initially absorbed by the roots by a process of osmosis. This is because there is a high concentration of minerals in the root cells and therefore water is drawn into the cells from a high water potential in the soil to a low water potential in the cells across a partially permeable membrane. The roots are highly adapted to this because the cells uh, around the edge of the root uh, have elongations, extensions that stick out into the soil. Now this, these are specialized cells called root hair cells and they provide a much larger surface area for osmosis to happen, so it increases the rate of osmosis. Once inside the root cells, it can then pass into the xylem vessels to be taken up the stem to the leaves. However, if the leaf is photosynthesizing, then water can actually get lost at this stage through the leaves via the little stomata. The stomata have to be open, those little pores on the underside of the leaf to let gases in and out, gas exchange for photosynthesis. So especially on hot days when there's lots of photosynthesis going on, really nice and sunny, all those little stomata will be open and lots of gases will be able to come in and out. But as a consequence of that, water can also be lost via these stomata and that is a process called transpiration. The water evaporates out, it doesn't drip out as liquid, it evaporates out uh, by diffusion in the form of water vapour. But as it loses more water, the plant will draw more water up to replace that and more minerals will travel up with that water in the xylem as well from the roots. We call this continuous process of water being drawn up through the xylem, lost out of the leaves uh, as vapour and then more being drawn up again, the transpiration stream. Now there are four main factors that can affect the rate of transpiration and you need to know what those factors are and be able to explain how uh, they affect the rate of transpiration. So those factors are light intensity, temperature, wind speed, and humidity. So starting with um, light intensity, you should be able to sketch each of these graphs as well. So this is what we'd expect to see with light intensity. As light intensity increases, more stomata open for photosynthesis. With more stomata open, more transpiration will occur. However, there will become a point where all the stomata are open. It doesn't matter how much more light you give that plant, all the stomata are open, and therefore the graph will plateau. It can't, transpiration cannot increase any further. So with temperature, the higher the temperature is, the faster the particles in the air move. They get more kinetic energy, they move around more. And this is going to increase the rate of evaporation uh, and diffusion from the leaf. So we're going to see a nice steady increase. As, uh, as you increase temperature, you're going to increase the rate of transpiration. With wind speed, as the wind increases, it moves away water particles surrounding the leaf. If you're moving away the particles from the outside, you're maintaining a high diffusion gradient between the inside and the outside of the leaf. So more water will evaporate out to replace that. And that will be a continuous process. If you keep blowing the other water vapor away, more will want to move out from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So it increases the rate of transpiration. With humidity, we actually have a graph that looks very different. Humidity is a measure of how much water is in the air. So if you increase the humidity, there is more water vapour in the air. Therefore, there is a lower concentration gradient between inside the leaf and outside the leaf, and therefore the rate of transpiration slows down. Now you need to know specifically about a piece of apparatus called a potometer. It is a simple piece of apparatus that is used to estimate the rate of transpiration. Now transpiration happens in those leaves, in the shoot that's sticking out there, and as water is lost, uh, more water will be drawn up. As it draws up more water, the little bubble that's been introduced into that capillary tube moves along. So what you can do with this apparatus is you can use it to investigate some of those variables we've just been talking about, things like light intensity and wind speed. You can use a lamp, for example, to change the light intensity by moving a lamp closer or further away and see the effect of uh, the rate of transpiration, which is going to be how far the bubble moves along that little tube in a given amount of time. Move the lamp closer, see if the bubble um, increases, the rate at which the bubble travels increases. 
you could uh, change the wind speed by using a fan and changing the speed of a fan and seeing how that affects the rate of transpiration, the rate the bubble moves along the tube. Or you could do humidity by placing a plastic bag over the top and adding different levels of water to that bag. See again how that affects the rate of transpiration. There's a couple of things you need to know specifically about how to set up this apparatus as well, because it's quite a tricky piece of apparatus to set up. Um, you need to cut the chute underwater at an angle to prevent air getting into the xylem. Very important. Assemble the apparatus underwater as well, so no air can get in. Check that, the, that it's water and airtight. Dry the leaves and leave time for them to get acclimatized to whatever the environment is that you're going to be testing them in. And then remove from the beaker of water for a certain amount of time, which will allow a little air bubble to be introduced in the capillary tube, and then put the beaker of water at the end there back again. Make sure you know the difference between your variables. The independent variable is the one that you change. Make sure you only investigate one independent variable at a time. So for example, it could be in this case, in this diagram, light intensity. That is a thing you are changing as the experimenter. The dependent variable is the variable that depends on the thing that you've just changed. It's the variable that you're going to measure. In this case, it's going to be the distance moved by the bubble in a given amount of time, which is essentially the rate of transpiration. Now, every other variable in your experiment needs to be controlled. They need to be control variables. Otherwise, your results aren't valid. Okay, so you need to make sure that anything else that could affect the rate of transpiration here is kept constant. That could be the humidity or the wind speed or the temperature or the type or of the plant or the surface area of the leaves. All those things need to be kept as constant as possible throughout the experiment.